When I first started rigging models, I was very new to the VTuber community. The only VTubers I knew of at the time were the really popular ones from Hololive, such as Gargura and Inugami Kurone. Hololive models have great art, but don't have super complex rigging, so I thought by creating a chibi model, I'd successfully make a cute VTuber without needing to put too much effort into the rigging. However, I quickly found more VTuber riggers that created very animated models. It didn't feel like I was looking at VTuber models anymore. It felt like I was looking at moving art. This inspired me to create a more complicated model myself. So now we're here. I've just successfully created a body for my updated model all ready to be rigged so that I can later draw and rig as many new outfits as I want. Such as this one. But how did I come up with the design for this model? Well, in this video, I'm just going to explain my process in designing my updated model. This won't necessarily be a tutorial video. However, I still hope you can learn some stuff about designing characters from my own process. Because the stuff I'm about to show you can be applied to creating OCs and stuff like that as well. Not just VTuber models. first thing I did before I even started drawing out my VTuber model plans was ask myself, what kind of theme do I want my model to have? For me, my VTuber self is just an extension of my true self and not a character, so creating a super sexy mommy model was out of the question. Creating a super cutesy model didn't feel quite right either. I wanted to make a model that I felt would mesh well with my voice and my personality. Another thing. I didn't think it was a good idea to become an animal girl, a demon, or anything like that since my model has always been human. I am very fond of Kawaii J fashion. Himekaji is my personal favorite. My favorite Himekaji brand to wear is Liz Lisa, so before I started drawing, I really took a good look through their website for ideas on how my model should look. So I decided my VTuber model would be a Himekaji girl with a cheese theme. already come up with the overall vibe I wanted my model to have, and now I felt ready to work on the fun part, coming up with the face. This may seem obvious, but the bust of a VTuber model is the most important part, because that's the part your audience will be focused on. So I really wanted to make sure my model had an attractive face. The eye shape of my model was 100% ripped from an already existing character. You see, Princess Jellyfish is one of my biggest comfort anime, and I really wanted to have something from the show on my models. One of my favorite characters from the show is Kuranosuke Koibuchi, and I really like him because I think he's really pretty. Koibuchi changes outfits frequently throughout the show, as he is a cross-dresser with a passion for fashion. But the one thing that stays constant in his appearance are his eyes. So, yeah, I kinda sorta copy-pasted his eyes onto my model. But what about the rest of the face? Well, I didn't want my model to be overly cutesy, so I looked to another already existing character I adore. That character would be Pearl from Splatoon 2. I admit I was one of those people that thought she was ugly when she was first revealed, but she eventually grew on me. And now I think her character design is one of my favorites in the Splatoon franchise. That's why I decided to snatch her hairline. I also snatched her choppy bangs and her smile. I had originally tried modeling my VTuber's body after the female characters from Nana, another comfort anime of mine. I really like how the girls look tall and elegant, and I thought it would be a good fit for the Himekaji vibe I wanted. But when I tried to give a similar slender look to my model, it didn't feel right. At this point, I thought my model looked kind of creepy, and as you can see here, looked rather doll-like. I liked the way it looked as a character, but it didn't really feel like a model that would suit me. To fix this issue, I went right back to using Pearl as my main reference. I decided to give my model proportions similar to hers, since I was already taking inspiration from her face. And that's why the updated design has a much more compact body with larger hands. I also decided to make my model's face look a little more pearl-like, 
by giving her a slightly more devious smile than the original design, as you can see here. In addition, I also decided to change my model's hair color to a very light orange because I thought this would make it look a little more cheese-like. As I've already stated numerous times, I wanted my model to wear Himekaji clothing similar to what you would find from Liz Lisa. And to tell you the truth, I based the original dress here off of the sewing bear dress from Liz Lisa. This is because I have plans to give my model a little bear mascot named Cannon Bear. I like the cheese! Once I get to reading special expressions, I would like updated me to hold Cannon Bear as a taco pose. So that's why I originally thought a dress like this was a good idea. The Liz Lisa sewing bear dress is plenty cute. However, the design I came up with for my model looked rather boring. It was a little too simple for my taste, and the colors weren't super appealing to me. What's more, I feel it made my model look a little too elegant, which contributed to the doggy look I didn't like. So, I had another safari through the Liz Lisa site and found some jumper shorts I thought were adorable. The jumper shorts also reminded me of Callie's original outfit from the first Splatoon game. Like Pearl, Callie is another character I hold very dear to my heart. So, giving my model yellow jumper shorts was the perfect idea in my eyes. Some of you might already know this, but Himekaji roughly translates to casual princess or princess style. I was very happy with my model design so far, but I still felt a desire to push the princess aspect a bit more. I experimented with adding a crown, but I didn't like it, so I opted for normal hair bows. I still thought the crown looked cute though, so I decided to add some crowns to the collar of my model's shirt. Now about the shoes. It may seem like I just changed their color to match the jumper, but that's not true. My current favorite Disney princess is Snow White, and the shoes that you see right here were actually originally inspired by uh, Snow White shoes. I decided to make them yellow in a final so that they would look even closer to Snow White shoes. A Yasified version of Snow White shoes. VTuber model is the most difficult simple thing to do because there are endless possibilities for the final design and all you need to do is just pick the stuff you want the most. For me, I had a lot of ideas which made it hard to think of just one thing to do for my model's appearance. So I grabbed ideas and inspiration from my favorite characters, pieces of media, and fashion brands when designing a new character. I still wonder if my model is going to be the best version of itself it could be. But if I keep worrying about that, uh, it will never get done. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how great your VTuber model's design is, or if the rigging sucks. Of course, a VTuber model with weak art can't be carried by spectacular rigging, so you'll need a good balance of both. Also, I still have to draw the parts for my model's clothing, so uh, here's to hoping I'll be 100% content with my model once the clothing is added.